So, so one of the things we find that is basically suicide is never introduce a centre in World Cups because 10, 12, 13 is where the most level of understanding is required. You need to have people playing in position that has a really positive impact on performance. Mm. Whereas when you have new people in those positions, you look at when Hugh Jones came in for Scotland, for example, uh, that, that, you know, Australia, unfortunately, you know, Junior Patea coming in in the quarters, um, it's, it just seems to be an absolute death knell because there's a law of diminishing returns. The 300th game between Cooper Conk and Kevin Smith doesn't really matter. It's the early stages where the problems lie. And so whenever you get relationships in early stages is when you get things going, you know, catastrophically wrong. Um, uh, and we see that across so many different sports. It's, it's amazing. And so one of the things we do is we look at system. So, for example, when a coach comes into a club, we found the more experience they have, the more the team tends to underperform. Because they, if you look at Gatlin and the Chiefs, for example, is they change so much to suit the way they might want to do something that the team is not unable to cope with that level of change, even if they are cohesive. It's almost like the cohesion works against them. The, the second component is role. So if you get people playing out of position, like I said, Kano from six to five, um, you know, different, you know, even even a lock at four or five. You look at England in the World Cup final having a four playing at five. You know, right side lock, um, that that component, and then you've got the interplay between people. Another interesting one we found actually was jerseys, is if you're using a jersey you haven't used before or played in quite a bit, that the ability of the team to attack drops off dramatically. They defend to the same rate, but so I think it, I think on average a game of a league or union is about 21-19 to the home team. The attack drops to an average of 14 points, but the defence 19 points doesn't change. Um, and so I was actually going through and looking last night at uh, uh, the 07 World Cup quarters. <laughs> We're uh, going to so go there. France. And, We're going to go there. Things was they completely <laughs> lost the ability to offload. I think their offloads were something like like 30% accuracy in the second half, and um, and 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 that's you know that's the, I'm not saying necessarily a jersey. You know, Graham Henry talks a lot about the penalty count in that game, but. When I've asked guys what happened, so I asked Sterling Mortlock and Danny Badiris, and they said, when you go to offload, you flinch. You go to turn to your teammate, and you're like, oh, hang on, is that my teammate? Mm. And it's just got to be different enough so you don't necessarily recognise it. Because we play games so much on feeling, um, you know, without sort of having to use our, use our conscious brain. Um, and, and that's why I think why change... I was actually asking Lottie Takiri the other day about switching codes, and he said... He had to concentrate so hard not to do what he did in rugby league. So going back to the dead ball, not scooping the ball over, because that equals, you know, five-metre scrum to the opposition, whereas in league, that's exactly what you do. And he said, you just couldn't concentrate that hard for that long in games to try to unlearn what he had learnt. And unlearning is harder than learning, mm. um, which is why transfer players struggle so much. It's amazing. You are talking to the folklore of New Zealand rugby in everything you say. The grey jersey... I mean, you, you say grey jersey in New Zealand, people just cringe. And, and, and centres, we talk Christian Cullen, <laughs> Leon McDonald. Um, I remember having a conversation with Warren Gatland after the 2019 World Cup where he was saying he couldn't believe that Sonny Bill and Ryan Crotty weren't selected. You know, the, the consistency of centres has always been an issue for the New Zealand public. Come World Cup time, they freak out about it. Um, and you've got analytics that say that everything they freak out about is justified. Well, what we've been doing basically for 10 years is talking to coaches and asking their opinion and they'll say something and we'll go, oh, okay, we want to go away and have a look at that. The, the thing with centres is a hardest position and it takes is. the longest time to build understanding in. The other thing is that New Zealand is generally a cohesive system in and of itself because it's small, right? You've got And, and that, that used to be the advantage Australia had. We had a small system you know, on a professional basis and that was our unfair advantage over the rest of the world. So... Um, now, what tends to happen is the big systems like England and France will be terrible between World Cups, but they're what we call back end. So you look at, say, France in 11, they lose to Tonga, and yet they still make a final. You know, France and England, you know, you look at, say, England in 07, they lose to South Africa by 40, and yet four or five games later, because, because they don't generally have cohesion through club, because they're so big, 
what will happen is they really don't get time together as a team until the World Cup, particularly now World Rugby's introduced that sort of three-month window leading into the tournament. So, you know, all form for us is completely out of the, out the window um, when it comes to World Cup. And if you look at what Japan did in the lead up to 15 and the lead up to 19, is they basically just kept the national team together for two or three years. And you saw that dramatic improvement because the way Japanese rugby is built, you can't get any cohesion in the club because there's so many of them. So, you know, uh, people will say New Zealand underperformed by not winning World Cups. It wasn't so much that. It was that the bigger countries were able to come to the table when they previously couldn't. You look at the improvement amongst the Celtic nations, who in many ways the Pro 14 has duplicated Super Rugby in a small amount of domestic teams playing together. The impact of that on on the Welsh and the Irish has been unbelievably dramatic. You know, the Welsh, you know, it wasn't popular that David Moffat regionalised Welsh rugby from 12 to 9 to 5 to 4, and they won one Six Nations in the previous 15, 20 years or something, and won five in the next 20 years. You know, they've, they've dramatically improved, or five in the next 16 years, and the Irish the same. Um, and you can see it taking place over time, um, that, that around the world now, there's much more teams who have cohesion. And I think the best example is last year, you know, the Haguaris slash Pumas, I'm not sure which one it was, beating the All Blacks. And the great shame of that is now being pulled apart because that was an accumulation of that decision to, 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 you know, not take a test team, but take a bunch of kids, keep them together. And they just went ninth, seventh, you know, fifth, second, first. Then it flowed on to the Argentinian national team and, and they end up beating, beating the All Blacks, which was unthinkable to people a long time ago. Mm. Mm. Um, let's apply these ideas now to Super Rugby Trans Tasman because what we've seen over the last two weeks is that we expected the Aussie sides to be a little bit closer and, and admittedly in the first week there were two very close games um, but in the second week it spread out a little bit more what is the story with the Australian teams needing what do they need to do to get that a little bit closer what have the trends been that you've noticed and and that has created the slight division two weeks in i I think we need to go back to i mean let's not do the entire history of australian rugby even though it'd be fun um we we just go back to last year you know and itm cup is not super rugby but it's close and a lot of the teams that are in itm are close to the super rugby teams so what you've got is is when super rugby finished last year all the australians just went back to play for their clubs or they played for the Wallabies. Where the New Zealand guys went back to ITM. So you had Canterbury and um, Tasman playing together, which basically just extends the Crusader season by 10 weeks. It's a 10 week preseason, then they have preseason, then away they go. So that's flowed in um, really nicely. So not having that for Australia last year, now we've got some budgetary concerns and they've now canned NRC which could theoretically make things worse because the cohesion that the Brumbies and the Reds have right now is off the back of the NRC that they've had for the last couple of years. 